So, hello my channel. Now, um, this is a little tutorial I'm going to do here, covering a kind of basic introduction to more almost a tool bag, uh, which is kind of a um, rendering type software in kind of real time. It's, I'm not entirely sure how to describe it, but it's very, very interesting. So, uh, this here is what you'll be faced with when you have it, you know, downloaded and installed and bought and all of that stuff. Uh, and I'll have a link to their website in the description if you do wish to purchase this, which I do recommend. It is very cool. So you'll be presented with this, which is the start screen here. So what you can see is these this little window pane here and all these different tabs with a bunch of buttons in them and a bunch of text and things, which is very cool. And here you have the mesh and the scene uh, kind of separate direc directories here. And... Mesh is obviously if you have like a model file you want to load in and you want to view in the software you can just go open mesh and you can load a dot uh, mesh or dot obj or a dot fbx file. Uh, you know usually obj is the most popular of those three but I mean fbx works too. Uh, Wavefront is just preferable. Uh, but then, then then there's the scene file. Scene files kind of work like Photoshop documents or Maya project files, you know, stuff like that. Uh, it kind of saves all the settings as well as the model and stuff like that, so uh, generally when you have a mesh loaded in and kind of the material set, um, you uh, you do set all those things. So I'll open a scene I already have and I'll go through uh, kind of what, um, what you should uh, expect to happen. Now this might take a while to load in because, uh, as it turns out, recording this doesn't really... My computer doesn't approve of it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but we'll see how this goes, so... Also, not entirely sure if if you saw me open the file, but it, I did open a file and it'll take a while to load, so I'll just talk while it does, so it shouldn't take too long, really. Um, I mean, hopefully, hopefully it shouldn't take too long. I, sh I could just cut this out if it takes too long, though, so uh, we'll see how it turns out. Hopefully it's fine. All right, so there we are. We have the file loaded in, and what you can see here is that this uh, this is actually a model I'm going to make a tutorial based on uh, in a in the, in the near future I'm working on it now. But yeah, it's kind of a monster uh, egg thing, and so this is basically what what the software does. It it renders out your model in real time and allows you to set, set a bunch of lights and stuff like that and make it look nice. So now when we have this loaded, uh, you can see that uh, it has a mesh, you know, tied to it, which is the uh, actual, you know, object, obviously, uh, which is open here. Uh, if you don't have a scene file, you obviously just open a mesh, and it'll basically be the same thing, except you don't have all the preset lights and stuff that I have, because I already set those beforehand to save time. Um, so this is the, the, that's the file panel. Not very interesting, really. Um, you can you know do stuff like save the scene again and set it as a, set it as the default scene if you want to, uh, which uh, you know I might do with so I have done with a couple of them. But uh, then you can obviously clear the default and then you can close the scene right there. So not very too interesting. Uh, then you can go into the output panel or tab right here. Which is kind of what you expect it to be. Um, you you can like change if you want to you know save a render or a screenshot of it as they call it here. You can set the settings, you know, super sampling and you know how large it'll be, and you can activate HDR if you wish to. Uh, you can also do a 360 shot with the images, which is very very cool. You can set the amount of images um, and you know stuff like that. You can also record. There's a built-in recorder for video. I find this actually isn't the best way to record here. If you have something like Fraps, that tends to record a lot smoother than the built-in video. And the built-in video recorder tends to save it in a bit of a weird codec as well. Um, but yes, so if you have Fraps or something like that, generally that works better. But this works just fine as well because you're, you're gonna, you can set like the uh, size and the you know make it do a turntable when you start recording stuff like that, which is cool. Also, uh, to rotate this viewport, if I didn't mention it, which I did not, uh, you basically, it's like a lot of other softwares. You hold down Alt and then you left click to rotate the camera, and you all hold down Alt and then you right click to zoom, and you Alt middle click to pan. So, pretty much exactly like, you know, softwares like Maya, very similar, so should be fairly natural, really. Um, so, also interesting is that, well, actually, we'll, we'll go to the material type first. So here you can set a bunch of materials for your model, obviously, to make it display. If you don't have any materials, I can show you right here. Um, if I say remove, uh, if I actually, if I just make a, uh, I remove both of these. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Let's make a new one. Save it as is something else. Very beautiful name. And then you reapply it to everything. You see what it looks like without the material on, um, which I'll show you right now. I have a couple of objects here. 
So this is basically what it looks like without material on, obviously no texture. Um, this looks a bit black because of the texture, or because of the lighting setup, but uh, yeah, so then you load in a texture and you apply it to your model, like this. Uh, I already have one set because I'm uh, prepared like that, I'm cool. And this is meant to have this on as well, there we are. So now it's set, now we have all the colors. And in here you set what type of material you want to be, channel mode, or channel model is kind of the uh, there's the different types of materials. There's fong, different types of fongs, there's a skin environment, and... Um, and an and sort of <laughs> anisotropic environment, uh, kind of complex uh, refraction stuff, like and flat environment too. You know, flat is all, flat. It's obviously just color, um, stuff like that, which actually I'm changed it there. We are. So blend mode, you can actually do uh, multiple ones, and you can kind of change them, which is interesting. It's kind of like the Photoshop blend blending options. You know, kind of like you can multiply it, you can alpha it, uh, or you can add alpha. It's very interesting. Uh, actually, so you can actually do alpha texturing with the uh, with the blend modes if you do like add alpha, pre multiply add alpha, so stuff like that, uh, which I'm not going to go into too much right now because I'm not really um, in the position to show that. Uh, you can also change the type of normal maps you have. If you have object space ones for for whatever reason, you can select them right here, and you know that changed them. Obviously, I don't, so it looks a bit odd, but uh, yeah, uh, you can change if you wanted to cast shadows or not, which um, I do, uh, which because it looks nicer. Uh, Void skinning if you have like animations or stuff like that, uh, which I do not. And background scaling uh, again if you uh, say want to hide all the back faces or if you want to show them, which uh, you know you might want to do. I generally have that off for some reason it's on now. Uh, it obviously depends on the model. Then in here you can set, set the diffuse, normal height, specular map, the detail, occlusion. You know you can set all of these different types of, of image maps. For this model it's very simple. I just have a diffuse, a normal, and a specular map. So what you do here then is just press this, and a dialog option comes up, and you kind of uh, select the file from there. Uh, there's also the these buttons right here. You can pre P is for preview. So here's the texture file here, which you know get up. You can do that for any of these. You can preview. Sorry, you can preview the normal map and the specular map. So I'm a bit sick at the moment, so I might sound really nasal. Uh, R is for reload, so it can, it can refresh the image if you say you are editing it real time and watching it in the software, it can re re refreshes and updates it. Uh, C is for clear, so if you just want to clear it and load another one, uh, that's fine with that. So then you can set a bunch of settings here, you know, specularity, okay, change that up and down, you know, it's not very, I'm not going to go into too much into this. Uh, it's, it's kind of standard material uh, settings, you can just, you know, cast shadows and stuff like that. Very, very kind of, um in depth really, there are a lot of settings here which you can change and um, it's fun to play around with, I, I do recommend just playing with it and uh, seeing what happens because you don't need to be like a lighting pro or a rendering pro to do this, I'm not very good at it myself but I mean I can still make something look fairly okay in this software which is kind of fun then we're going to the view uh, dialog here which has a bunch of different options here, not too many though um, these are kind of interesting a lot of these are self-explanatory. You can select a background color, like I have one that's you know kind of grayish. You, know, you can set it to white if you want to for whatever reason. Um, you can set it to red, which looks horrible, <laughs> and uh, you know something like completely black, which I don't really like. But yeah, I generally have something like a semi-black color. Uh, you can select the draw sky box. This generally uh, in the lighting options, you can select the sky lighting presets, which generally tends to dictate the sky box. Um, or you can set your own skybox uh, in in another pal uh, panel. But, uh, so, this is the one I have right now, which I generally don't have these shown. I mean, it's kind of, some people do like to have them on. Personally, I don't, I think it's just distracting and it looks a bit weird having your model float around in this big cathedral. If you want to be completely honest, I mean, there are different ones, uh, which I'll show you in a bit, but, yeah. Uh, also, you can, you know, set the background image if you really want to. I mean, I can select something here. I don't really know what, so I don't think I have any real pictures. Um, it also loads... Uh, the file formats it, it supports are the uh, Photoshop document files and, and the TJ files mainly, and you can also load DDS files and PFM files if you do want to. Uh, generally, I tend to use TJ because uh, target is quite good. Image stretch mode is just if you have a background image, you can, you know, select you know, these scale to fit or whatever, whatever you want. Uh, turntable and transformations. This is, this is kind of interesting because you can kind of set these. Uh, if I unpause it, I currently have a uh, mesh turntable on. Uh, so you, at first, these are set to zero, right? Because um, they don't want you. It doesn't have any turntable as you just load it in. Uh, so if you increase the mesh turntable, it kind of increases the speed and it automatically automatically starts turning. 
which is uh, actually very useful. And you can do this for the skylight if you really want to do that. You can see what that does if you put it up to max. And even the camera if you wish. So you can do something very, very freakish if you want to do that. But that, that's a bit silly. Um, generally I have this around 10. Uh, and uh, that, that gives a good speed. So you can also press T on your keyboard to pause this and unpause it if you think you don't like it spinning around like that. Uh, which I mean, generally I don't. So... <laughs> I just have that for when I want to like render out the actual turntable or whatever. Um, so then you can select different raw map options here. You can invert the Y axis and stuff like that, which I'm not gonna do. Which is uh, if in case you kind of mess something up. Yes. Uh, then on the reference section right here, you can kind of select some of the measurements reference. You have a ruler here if you want to see how big it is. You have a human scale reference, uh, which actually makes me realize how small my thing is, which actually should be a bit bigger. But oh well. Um, yeah, that's a lovely, lovely <laughs> guy right there. Uh, and you can say, you can even have like reference meshes, which is kind of interesting. You can select the normal di directions or the tangent basis they call it here, uh, which is you know this here. And you know if you have some sort of inverted normals, it kind of shows you it right here. And then you select the what you can actually view the Y frame uh, if you just press this, which uh, you can see right here. This is a um, bake, so this isn't actually uh, the high poly or anything like that. It is a low poly version. You can select the wireframe color if you think that black isn't too good. You can make it white and make everything look horrible, but, you know, more viewable. And, uh, you know, it actually works quite well, so... You can also take the outline, kind of the, uh, kind of cartoonish effect. You can see the black outline right here. You can increase the strength of both of these if you want a really thick wireframe for whatever reason. Uh, which, generally, you probably don't, but... <laughs> which is kind of fun to play around with. Generally, I have this off as well. I mean, unless I want to kind of have it kind of, um... A wireframe shot I tend to do like this, uh, which, you know, works fine. You'll, you can also have a floor, which you, you see I have right here. This is my floor. Um, you, you, it's basically just a plane they put in, which you can select the size of, uh, you can have it as, big, as big as you want. And it, it, it loads off a TJ file again. You can kind of make these your own, and I, I've made this little sort of weird alpha type thing right here, which fades off at the end and it looks kind of cool. So, I mean, it's not difficult to make one of these. It's just basically fading out the size of the image, and it, it kind of does it this. <laughs> and uh, you can set floor high as well if you wanted to, like, in, up there or something. Um, you can also auto-position this, which kind of determines kind of a relative size to it and, and position it, positions it to where uh, the bottom of your model, you know, touches it so it stands on the floor. I generally just use auto-position and then kind of tweak the size to my liking. Uh, for now, this kind of works. So... Then you have the light options. These are these are kind of interesting because I have a couple of lights in this scene. This scene. First of all, there's the skylight preset. If I activate the skybox here, so you can see that the preset I have going on right now is the cathedral, which gives off a kind of a warmish light and kind of makes it a bit orange and uh, stuff like that. There are a lot of different of these. You can see like there are sunset type ones, which completely change the lighting. And you know, if I you, if I shift and click and drag, it can you can rotate the skylight, uh, which is cool. And there's also like blue sky. I mean, these are very fun to play around with. Um, you can you know, give it some forest. Kind of looks like it's, it's in a forest. And uh, you know, you can see actually the differences it has on the model. It does look very different. You can, it kind of makes you realize how much lights matter. Um, generally, I tend to have you know pavement. I think is quite fine for this model. It looks quite cool. Um, it's kind of a neutral type look. Uh, for this model, I did keep the cathedral just because it, it it's the br one of the brightest ones and kind of shows off the most of the model, so I like that one. Um, I generally don't have the skybox on though because it, it's it's just very distracting. Uh, if you don't if you're not happy with this, you can kind of edit the sky options with the sky tool here and the open sky if you want to if you have your own sky file or skylight file, um, or you can just make your own with the sky tool right here, which uses panorama based images and stuff like that. You can select the brightness and the rotation, obviously. The rotation here is what you change when you hold down shift and you click. Uh, so that's basically just changing the slider. <coughs> then you can add your own lights if you're not happy with it. I have a couple here. Which I only have one enabled for now. I, uh, if I enable the other ones by pressing the ena enable button right here, you can see what they do. Uh, they kind of give a bit of a rim light and show some of the darker areas like this. And uh, I, it's, it's kind of another thing you can play around with. You can have them as... Uh, normal kind of environment lights, or you can have them as spotlight lights, which give off shadows, and you can change a bunch of intensity, radius, like the shadow sharpness, you can even add like lens flares, which looks kind of neat like that, you can see what they do. Um, 
if there's anything this plugin does, it does look very nice. You can see that that is, that is a quality effect. Um, <laughs> generally, I don't tend to have that on though. You can spotlight gel, you know, do all these different kinds of things. You can even animate the lights if you wish to do that, uh, which is uh, quite cool. I generally tend to sometimes play around with that. It's kind of fun. Uh, this is one of the tabs you'll spend a lot of time in, you know, changing the skylight and all that. Uh, it, it's generally quite fun to do, so it's, uh, yeah, it's just fun to play around with. Under the render option, again, you can kind of change the... Um, Change the way you view the model. This is actually very, very useful. You can just you can view the flat out diffuse if you want to do that. And this is the flat diffuse, which uh, actually doesn't change that much because of the lighting and stuff like that. But yeah, so this is just the diffuse in the model. Um, you can change it to just the specular channel if you want that. And that gives us this, this effect for this model, which looks uh, kind of neat if I'm completely honest. And uh, let's see, you can also change a bunch. I mean, you can use the view the ambient occlusion. I don't think I have one set, or maybe I do. Oh, yeah, this, this is just the one baked into mod the model. Um, or, yeah, the actual, like, mesh. So you can also view the normals, obviously. Um, world space, which actually well, is not correct. Uh, I have tangent space normals with on this model. So that's the normal map, and, uh, you know, all that. So standard is kind of the always blended together, and, uh, you know, it quite looks nice. So. It's kind of if you want construction shots of your model, that's kind of what you want to do. Uh, you can deactivate shadows in your scene, like here, no shadows. It's kind of like deactivating shadows on your, the material, just for everything. Uh, front face cast shadows, kind of explanatory. Uh, you can use ambient occlusion, you can deactivate and activate that at your disposal, and you can change the strength. I generally keep that quite high because I like the look of it. And it kind of helps distinct, uh, or, you know, helps uh, separate the different shapes and kind of makes it easy to see. Change the field of view if you want that, like 120 for whatever reason, um, or something like that, which looks a bit odd. Uh, but, you know, if you want to see how it looks like in a perspective mode, that works. 60 is a good, you know, story for a point, either 60 or 90 I tend to have on. Uh, you can also act a depth of field, which actually works quite well. You can see there's a focus point here. If I see so now it's changing, I can zoom in. You can change this focus field dif distance here, focus distance, and you know, kind of focus. It's like focusing a camera basically. Um, it doesn't work very well. I don't tend to have this on because uh, for the renders, I kind of just want to show off the model. And as it turns out, just because of the nature of depth of field, it does distort some bits. Like here, you can you can't really see the detail here, but if I turn it off. Now you can see a bit more detail on these back pieces. So, I don't tend to have that on. If you just want a beauty render, I suppose you can have that on, because it does make it look a bit nicer. Um, so, it's it's good to have it for that. That You can also use autofocus with it, which is uh, obviously useful if you don't want to tweak sliders. Stereo, you can kind of make it look kind of like this. You can make it look semi-3D, if you know what I mean. You can flip the eyes, and, you know, all that eye separation. Um, which uh, is interesting, if you have the old school 3D glasses, this could be fun to play around with, uh, but uh, I don't tend to have that. There's also post effects here, uh, which even more effects, you can have blue mon, which doesn't do much for this model, but uh, it's kind of this, I don't really like the look of it, to be honest, I don't have that on. Uh, also underneath here, you can change the options for these different things, you can change the um, general saturation of the model, you uh, cannot do this, you can make it black and white, which is interesting. Uh, and, you know, contrast, the same thing, and, you know, bias and all that. You can change the bloom, the bloom power and the sharpness, which I tend to play around with quite a bit, actually. Uh, you can do sort of vignette stuff, which doesn't really show too well here, but, uh, yeah, you can do this for whatever reason. I'm not sure why you'd want to do this. If you're doing, like, some sort of camera look thing, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't look very good. Uh, God rays are kind of interesting if I can show them off. If I, like, show, if I change the views to, like, sunlight? Um, if I also view the skybox, the god rays are, you can see these things right here, the, yeah, that stuff, it, it does, I tend to have that on because I really do like the look of it and I think it looks cool, uh, but you don't necessarily need to have those on, it doesn't show very much, you can kind of see it when you don't have the skybox on, but yeah, it's, it's a minor effect, uh, I tend to have it on just because I like it and I think it's fun. And sharpen obviously on, uh, or not obviously, I mean, it does look alright without it, but I tend to have it on because it just kind of brings, it, it's kind of like anti-aliasing of sorts. Uh, it, it kind of just looks better, I think. Then if you have animations, you can, you know, open skeletons, stuff like that here. I'm going to add the animations and animation speed, it's very interesting. Uh, you can actually do a lot of uh, advanced rendering stuff with this. And that's all the options I've gone through right here. You can also, if you press spacebar, it removes the UI and you can just, you know, view this if you want to take screenshots. Uh, the shortcut for screenshot is, I think, F12, is it? I think it is. 
Uh, yes, it is. And, you know, video F9. And then you can always just save the scene if, you've, if you're happy with the changes. And uh, you can also, if you want to, say if you want to hide a bit of the mesh that you have here. Uh, what you can do is just make a clear material, which I have here, which has a um, diffuse normal but that has no... Uh, he has alpha and then 100% alpha. I can just kind of assign it to, uh, say, the spine if I want to hide that and just show the rest of the model. I can do this. So now I can see what's actually behind the spine. And, uh, you know... That's very, it's its kind of obvious, I guess, but it, it's something that I tend to use a lot, so I figured I'd mention it, uh, because uh, sometimes I like to, you know, show what's underneath, like, this light stuff, you can rotate the light to make it look a bit more emphasis, and you can see all the different things here. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of, I had a bit of fun, as you might see, making this model, but yeah. Then you want to revert it back, you can just assign the material. It's very, very, this, this software is really fun, if nothing else. It's really fun, it's actually very powerful as well. I guess it costs a bit of money, but you can get the demo and you can kind of play around with it. It does have a water mark on if you do, but uh, the demo works just fine, and if you like it, you can buy it. Uh, they do t update it uh, re quite regularly, adding a bunch of new uh, features and stuff like that, which is very cool. And it does work. It, it is a bit like, if you don't have a really good PC, it might run a bit slowly, but... Uh, and that depends on the model too, obviously. But you can do some, if you if you watch some of the screenshots of people playing with this, who actually know what they're doing, uh, in comparison to me, you can do some really cool looking stuff with this. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really worth playing around with if you uh, like rendering stuff. This is, uh, I used to render in Maya just natively, and I really didn't like the look of that, because Maya's, I think I'm just shit, to be honest, but I don't, I don't think Maya's rendering is as... Uh, easy to use and as just instantly gratifying at this uh, as this and um, you know just look very nice uh, I wonder if we can hide, hide the eye I haven't actually tried that how does that, that look? oh god oh god you can see the insides no no <laughs> um yeah I mean I I have a lot of fun with this oh yeah wrong material sorry uh get the eye there we are so yeah that, that's that's Mormon's tool bag it's made up by 8monkey uh, I think it is, uh, yeah, yeah, 8 Monkey Labs, and I'll, I'll, I'll have a link in the description for it, and, uh, thanks for watching, if you did like the video, do give it a like, that's pretty appropriate, if you do like my videos, you can give me a subscribe, and, uh, if you don't like it, don't dislike it, and if you don't want to subscribe, don't, it's very simple, you have freedom of choice here, uh, so, let's just do a quick turntable here and i'll leave you off with this as i will see you next time for hopefully the full series on how to make this model right here which uh, should be fun so thanks